property rental companies, should I own one or should I not? When I'm buying a property, should I buy it in my personal name or should I buy it in a property rental company? Is there a company actually that is called a property rental company? What company should I be buying my properties in? Or maybe what other entities are they to buy? Today, I want to speak to you guys around a, a particular company in which you can obviously buy your properties in. Well, there are so many entities that you can do there or so many entities where you can buy your properties. Or you'll hear other people say there are so many vehicles that you can buy. But today, I want to speak specifically to a company where you can buy your rental properties and why you would want to do it that way. Is it beneficiary to you? And if it is not, why are others doing it? I'm sure it's got a benefit, but what is the benefits? Today, I am going to be talking to you about that. So let's talk about the obvious. And I know you're already saying ah, it's tax. It's got a tax benefit. What tax benefit? Okay, let's debug it. Let's talk about it. Okay. And again, if this information is helping you guys in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts are. And if the information is good for you, copy and paste it on your social medias for others to know about this great information that we are talking about. Yeah. Number one, the reason why you want to buy your properties, your rental properties in a company, company rental property. Yeah, that's the key word that we want to talk about, company rental property. A company where you are buying your properties for rental purposes. Tomorrow, when you are now doing a development, you separate the two. And I'll tell you a little bit later on why you want to do that. So the first one is that we spoke about. Taxes, taxes, taxes. Everybody is worried about taxes. I always say to people, if you decide to go and swim in the river, don't be scared of the crocodiles. They are there. You swim with them. And you need to understand where they are so that you can avoid them. Mm, there is a word that is called avoid tax or evade tax. If you don't know of those two words, then go and see your tax practitioner or your accountant. Now, let me speak of the obvious thing. Number one, when you are an individual like me and I'm employed, right? Your tax bracket is up to 45%. Up to 45%. Right. So depending on how much you earn. So it basically means that if you are now going to buy your properties on your personal name, it basically means that it can either start pushing your tax bracket. Maybe you are at 30, but because now you've got a rental income, it now pushes it to 30, 5, 30, 7, 40, up until maybe you now have 10 properties and it takes you all the way to 45. Or maybe you're already a young executive and you're already on 45%. You're like, yeah, well, why not? Right? There's another reason that I'd like you to consider. The flip side of it, if you're to buy the properties in a company rental for your property, in a company, in a company, why would you want to do that? Because taxes is up to, up to, ne? up to 28%. So which means that if you are making the same profits, yeah, between a company and a person, you can see there on the personal perspective, you're already paying so much taxes. And on a, on a personal, on a company level, you're paying less. So who wants to pay more taxes? Nobody, is it? That's the number one reason why you would want to do that. The second reason why I, I think, there are many reasons, but this is my reasoning, why you want to buy your rental properties into a company. So having a company rental business, right? The reason why you want to do that is ownership. The first time you're going to be buying your property, if it's in a company, you don't own it. Oh, yay. Ah, TJ. No, Uncle TJ. I gotta own this, you know. I never own anything. Mm, you still own it. You're the owner of the company, right? But in this case, you don't own it directly. You are controlling the business. The business is owning the property. Control is more powerful than ownership. I will speak to you about risk a little bit later, right at the end of my video, on why you wouldn't want 
The ownership in your personal name, you rather have it in another entity. But let me give you a quick example. I've got over 200 tenants. None of them, none of them, none of them know that I am the owner of those properties. They don't know that I'm the landlord. Why? Because none of those properties are in my name. They are always in a company name. So when I get there and I'm collecting my rent for whatever reason, by the way, I do not collect rent with the best for bet. I'm like, yeah, let me have my money. No, I don't do that, right? So we've got a property company, property rental company that collects for us. But when I get there, whether I am viewing, whether I'm doing quality checks, they just look at me as that other guy. And I always introduce me as the property manager. When it becomes tougher to have a tough conversations, if you are addressing yourself as the owner, it basically means that the bucket stops with you. So some of those tenants that are a little bit pushy, they're going to ask of you, can we have a little bit of discount because it's December? Now for me, I will always say, it's a great idea. But let me go and ask the landlord. When I come back, I say, hey, the landlord said no. And who's the landlord? Yeah. So you got a third party that you always need to take, uh, to go to. But they don't know that. Because uh, none, none of my companies, right, has a relationship to me. So they are not TJ. Huh? They are not Taurai. Huh? They are not Jack Holdings. No, they're not. They're, they are random names. M5 property addicts. Who would know, right? So ownership is very important there. The third one that I want to speak to you is the borrowing power. As an individual in our country, we do have what is called National Credit Act. National Credit Act, it's got a ceiling. It stipulates that when you are borrowing, you should borrow up until to this level as a person. But as a company, ooh, there is no limit. You can borrow and borrow and borrow and borrow. And you can become a millionaire. You can become a billionaire with buying your properties. For as long as it is that business is profitable, for as long as that business is uh, it's got equity and all of those nice things. Because the government and the Reserve Bank and the banks, they want companies to progress. The more you progress, the more you're going to employ people and the more they are going to collect tax and the more they are going to be happy. Does it make sense? If it's making sense in the comments, let me know. Number four. Well, when you have a company, you can now start employing other people. You're going to employ people that can manage the properties for you so you don't have to do the work for you. You can employ people that can do the maintenance for you so that you don't have to do it yourself. In a nutshell, you can run this company from wherever you are in the world. Yes, wherever you are in the world. You can even put a managing director there. Oh, you want to be the managing director, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, jokes aside, when you've got a property that is dedicated for rental purposes, you can have it in a company so that over and above that, when you're doing all of these things, you can be able to run and have employees that can do all of this work for you. I didn't speak about risk. That's the last thing that I want to speak to you guys about. Risk, risk, risk. Now, if you're buying your, pro, your rental properties, you, a rental property is something that you have today and you've got it for a long time with it. Five years, 10 years, 20 years, even for the next generation. So how do you make sure that you reduce the risk on the properties? It is simple. When you put the property in a different entity, you yourself are one entity. So if you're putting the property in another company, which is, an, which is an, a different entity, a company separate from you, you have literally gone and bought something and you control it, but with, without you owning it, another company is owning it and another entity is owning it, which basically means that if something happens with this property here, in this entity here, it does not come to you personally. So let me give you an example. This is a wild example. 
you are who you are and you are doing let's say student accommodation and something happens on that property people die and you get sued if you own the property directly in your name who are they going to sue you yes yeah yeah negligence of wara 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 but if the same happens was the property is in a company then who are they going to sue the company isn't yes so you have reduced the risk or you've transferred the risk onto your business there are so many reasons or there are so many risks out there that we can speak about that you can mitigate but the real thing is that you also want the ownership and the risk the ownership to continue in generations and the way that you can do that is obviously in a company companies don't die when you die obviously now there's another component of taxes as well so when you die what happens well the government is going to say well let's have let's close this estate this property is part of this estate but if you structure it well within this company maybe with a trust maybe maybe with the other things there you can outlive yourself and this that we have built the rental portfolio can be there for generations to come long after you are at Jesus location i hope this information has been grateful to you and i hope it's been making sense if it has been that is awesome Today, I've been talking about buying properties in a company, owning a rental company business in a company, not you. If the information has been informative to you, then again, let me know. But if you have any questions in the comments, you can chat to me as well. You can also chat. You can also see in the description for some of the products and services that we offer like mentoring, like coming in to learn how to do some of these things that I talk about. It is I, your boy, TJ. We will check you out on the next video.